Hello, welcome to my talk, Log Everything with Logstash and Elasticsearch. Um, to begin with, just uh, raise your hands. Who uses logging in your applications? Yes, that's great. Who uses a central log server? That's okay. I hope there uh, will be some more after this talk. A little bit about me. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. Um, you can get the slides on GitHub. I'll post them afterwards. And of course, you can visit my blog at peter Um I'm a software developer at Blue Yonder. We are a sponsor of this event. Um, Blue Yonder is the leading software as a service provider for predictive analytics in the European market. Um, we have a headquarter in Karlsruhe and offices in Hamburg and London and about 120 employees. We use the full Python stack for development. Um, we use Flask for web front end, um, SQL Alchemy for database access, and the Pandas NumPy scikit-learn stack uh, for our machine learning tools. Most of our core algorithms are written in C++ and executed on a custom parallel execution, execution engine. And of course, we are hiring. So, log everything. When your application grows beyond one machine, you need a central space to log, monitor, and analyze what's going on. Logstash and Elasticsearch store your logs in a structured way. And Kibana is a great web front end to search and aggregate your logs. Um, just a little uh, disclaimer. Um, I'll talk a lot about uh, Logstash, but I think the same uh, counts for Greylog. Greylog is also a great tool to collect your logs and I think they have um, similar strengths and some differences. So what do you need if you want to um, have a central uh, logging for your applications? Of course, you have log producers. It can be your front end. might even be a JavaScript single page application, which uses a custom API to ship the logs to the back end might be some API or backend uh, service. It might be an authentication service. It might be even a database system or the operation system. You have to um, transport your logs to a central station. Um, I think everybody knows syslog. I'll talk a little bit about GELF. That's the Greylog extended logging format. But you can also ship your logs via Redis queues or via the RabbitMQ system. You could even uh, log to log files and pass them back with the grog um, regular expressions. But I think um, you have more benefits if you log um, your messages in a structured way. Then you have to root and filter your logs. You can do this with Logstash or with Greylog2 server. And of course, you need some storage where you can store your log files. I think Elasticsearch is one of the great open source tools. Um, it not only allows you to uh, search your logs, but do all kinds of analysis based on your log files. And to do the analysis, you need a front end to, acce uh, to access your logs. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Kibana. It's a JavaScript only uh, framework. Uh, the Greylog2 server has bundled a web interface but you can also use the plain um, Elasticsearch head. It's a uh, uh, JavaScript application too. Uh, or even use Python with the Pyus library um, to build custom queries and reports against your log files. So what I'm gonna talk today is the logging chain um, to transport your logs with GELF to a Logstash server. The Logstash server pipes them into an Elasticsearch search engine and you um, access uh, the logs with the Kibana web framework. It's the, yeah, the pattern, transport, root, store, and analyze. Um, if you need to grow further, um, you, can, uh, you can scale each part um, of the system. You can add more nodes to Elasticsearch. Um, you can use uh, multiple logs instances or even um, at a message broker in front of your Logstash so that the message broker collects the logs and then ships them to Logstash uh, to handle uh, the load better. What is GELF? GELF is the Greylog extended logging format. 
It's basically JSON over UDP. That means it's non-blocking. But um, it avoids some shortcomings that you have from plain syslog, with, which is all, uh, also um, text over UDP. Um, it's not limited to one kilobyte. Um, I know syslog and GE can um, handle more, but the plain uh, syslog can just handle one kilobyte. Um, often one kilobyte is not enough, especially when you do application uh, monitoring uh, logging because of backtraces and you just have more data. Um, GELF also uh, adds structure to your logs. So you have a key value uh, relation um, in JSON and it has uh, compression built in and the possibility to add chunking. Um, you can, one log message can be chunked to I think about 120 um, messages. Also, syslog uh, per default has uh, no support for additional fields and metadata. Um, in GELF, you can add arbitrary fields and arbitrary metadata to your log messages. So I think GELF um, is a great choice um, for logging with applications. And of course, there is the GrayPy Python handler and clients for all kinds of uh, messages too. Um, one thing you have to consider um, when you want to, to log with GELF, um, because it's um, sent by UDP, um, it's not reliable. If your network is flaky or if the server is under high load, um, messages could get lost. So if you really want to get sure that your log message arrive at the server, you have to consider um, different um, transport formats. Like I said earlier, um, a Redis or the RabbitMQ system. So what does a uh, log message in GELF look like? Um, you have a mandatory version field. You have the host field uh, where the log message comes from. You have a short message. You have a timestamp. You have the log level. And then you'll have an arbitrary number of custom fields like a facility, or some request ID. I'll talk about this later. So how to use this with Python? It's pretty straightforward. Um, works with the panda, uh, with the standard Python logging. Uh, you just uh, add a GELF handler, host and port, and you can just uh, log as normal, and the handler will push it into your um, GELF aware service. Um, in our case, to Logstash. So what is Logstash? Um, Logstash is a tool for receiving, processing, and outputting logs. It's written, uh, written in JRuby and runs in the Java virtual machine. It's based on the pipes and filter pattern. So you have incoming pipes, you transform the messages, you filter the messages, you may even add fields or delete fields, and you uh, have a, pi a pipe where you output it to Elasticsearch. Um, Jordan Sissel, the creator of Logstash, is now employed by Elasticsearch, and um, the Kibana uh, web, uh, web Analysis Toolkit uh, is also under the hood of the Elasticsearch company. So how do you run Logstash? Of course, you just download it, unpack it, and you need some simple configuration. As I said earlier, you have to define inputs, filters, and outputs. The filters are optional. Um, here, I'll just drop all uh, messages with the log level debug. For our system, we, um, we define a GELF import uh, input filter, but you, uh, Logstash can also provide uh, input types like syslog or redis or other tools, like I said earlier. The output um, is to Elasticsearch, pretty straightforward. You can also output to a file, but it's, of course, um, you get only the benefit if you, lo if you put your structured logs into a log stash. Okay, what's Kibana? Kibana is a single-page JavaScript application. You need no install. Just unzip it um, in your Nginx root folder or Apache root folder. And it's a tool to search and analyze time-based data in Elasticsearch. 
It has a rich set of visualizations and um, provides the access to the full powerful search syntax from Elasticsearch. And you can create and share um, dashboards um, for yourself or within the company. A big ad advantage uh, in using Kibana is uh, it is possible for non-programmers or not so skilled uh, people to query and analyze logs. And I think uh, a really important point is you don't have to have access to your servers um, to analyze your logs. But you have to consider um, Kibana has no authentication built in, so it directly talks to an Elasticsearch uh, search service and who can read from Elasticsearch can also write to Elasticsearch. So if you need extra security, um, you have to put a proxy in between and handle, uh, do some authentication. The next slides um, are some possibilities to visualize um, search queries from Elasticsearch with Kibana. BetterMap um, uses geographic coordinates uh, to create clusters uh, on a map. You can zoom in. Um, you can do this based on country codes in your log messages. And yes, if you want to drill in, you can click on the clusters and have a better view on it. Uh, you can build panels with histograms. Histograms um, display time charts. Um, it displays counters, mean, minimum, maximum, and the total number of numeric fields. You can um, build spark lines. Spark lines are a great tool to get an overview of your system, what's going on. It's uh, based on tiny um, time charts. And you don't get the exact numbers, but um, if you look at uh, a spark line, with uh, normally you can really uh, fast access what's going on and if there's something wrong with your system. Then Kibana provides, uh, provides some visualization for um, the facet uh, calculation from, uh, logs, uh, from Elasticsearch. Uh, facet calculation means um, based on uh, a set of filters, uh, you can see how uh, one term is uh, distributed. Here you can see, I think that there are logs uh, from um, a web server, what kind uh, of files you have uh, delivered, mostly HTML, some PHP, and yes, some images. So it's also nice to get a quick overview of your, of your system. After talking a little bit um, about the technology, uh, I'd like to present them some um, logging patterns that are useful uh, when you want to add structured logging to your application. Um, they are all based um, on adding context to your log messages. So the easiest way uh, to add context to a log message is just use the extra field from your log um, message. Um, it just takes a dict where you can add arbitrary key value pairs and the gray log uh, gelf handler just pushes them into logstash. A little bit more advanced is using, uh, using um, a filter. Um, with a filter you can uh, add context to all of your logging afterwards. So if we um, have a web application with a user logged in, we can add a filter which adds the logged in username to all the logging messages afterwards. The request ID lets you collate uh, all log message from a request together. So if you generate a request ID at the beginning of a web request, and just add them at a with a context to all the following log messages. It's easy um, to identify um, messages from the same request, and it makes debugging much more easier. 
How does it work? Okay, you get a re uh, request to your application, you set the, the request uh, ID, and all the logging messages have the request ID applied. How could you implement this? Uh, this is an example for Flask. Flask provides a before request handler. Um, it's always called when a new request starts. We are generating a UUID and we are adding a filter to the logging so that every log message has this um, request ID applied. Um, a correlation ID lets you correlate log messages from different applications and systems. Um, if you have a front-end server and some back-end AP servers, you want to correlate your log message says, um, over all these servers. So what do you do? At the beginning of the request on the front-end server, you generate a correlation ID, and when you make requests to the back-end servers, you add the correlation ID to all your requests, and the back-end servers just read um, the X correlation ID header field and add this um, correlation ID to the log messages. Same ID here. All the log messages have the same correlation ID, and you can follow um, a web request across different applications. Implementation for Flask, pretty straightforward. You just get the header field if it's set, and if, again, you, um, you add a filter. Yeah. Um, I've started the talk uh, with the claim, log everything. Um, that's not always true. If you have really big systems, maybe you don't want to log every um, debug message. And uh, there's a really cool handler. It's not yet um, available in the Python logging, but it's available uh, in the logbook from Armin Ronacher. Um, what is a finger crossed handler? Um, the handler wraps another handler and buffers all the log messages until um, a trigger, also an action level is triggered. That means you can buffer all the debug messages, and if there's afterwards an error message, then it outputs all the debug messages. If there's no error messages, they are dumped. So in the error case, you have all your debug messages in your system, and everything, if everything works okay, you just, uh, they are dumped away. Yeah, it's the implementation, pretty clear, I think. Um, I really like logbook. Um, I think it's a worthy alternative to the standard logging, but you have always to weight um, the benefits of using an extra library to the benefits of using the standard what is in Python. So that's my talk. I'm finished, one minute left. Thank you very much. And